Chapter 3 of the human life is called the childhood stage. In the past videos na nilabas natin, we discussed that the first chapter is the prenatal stage, followed by infancy. For today, we are going to discuss childhood stage from ages 3 to 12 years old. Obviously, ang childhood, pwede natin makonsider ito as a different stage compared to other developmental stages. In developmental psychology, how do we know that a stage is definitely a stage in the human life? Paano ba natin nasasabi na yung stage na yun eh talagang stage nga yun compared to other different stages? Ang sagot dyan, because in that stage, there are unique ways of thinking and behavior that people in that stage display. So, kaya natin tinawag na stage yung isang stage in developmental psychology kasi yung kung paano mag-isip or paano mag-behave yung mga tao in that stage completely different compared to the people in other stages and that includes childhood. So, ano ba yung kakaiba sa mga bata during this stage compared to people in other stages like for example in adolescence or in adulthood sabi ng isang author there is a garden in every childhood an enchanted place where colors are brighter the air is softer and the morning more fragrant than ever again i think ang implication dito is the way a child sees the world is qualitatively different compared to adulthood no Iba yung pananaw ng mga bata sa mundo. No? Generally, they are very positive towards the world. In another illustration, sabi ng isang author dito, there are kids arguing. Sabi ng isa, I hate you. I won't play with you again. So, they played apart. Nagtampuhan sila. But after a few minutes, they played again and shared toys. Nagbati na sila. Why? The author says, because for kids, happiness is more important than pride. Again, the way kids think, the way kids manage their emotions, manage their behaviors, are completely different compared to people in other developmental stages. Kaya nga, yung picture ng isang typical na bata, I would say, and a lot of people would agree, masiyahin. Kasi nga, yung panano ng bata sa buhay, in general, it's very positive. Most likely, kapag sinabi mong bata or a kid or a child, makakita ka ng isang bata na nakasmile, naglalaro, tumatawa. Because during this period of our life, that is how the way we see the world, we have a very positive picture of the world. In fact, because kids are so positive, they are so good-natured, merong special mention ang childhood in the Bible. Diba, sabi sa Matthew, Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I would like to emphasize on the words like this child. Anong ibig sabihin ni Jesus when he said like this child? Paano raw tayo makakapasok in the kingdom of heaven kapag meron kang attitude, meron kang behavioral patterns, meron kang thinking patterns like this child? Ibig sabihin, dapat humble ka, dapat good-natured ka, dapat yung pinoprosesa mong mga bagay sa isip mo, very positive. Because these are the different psychological features that a child possess. That's why our goal for today is to, we are going to identify the unique psychological traits that kids share in common. Okay? So that will be our goal for today. But remember, childhood. Mahabang stage kasi yan eh, ba? Sabi doon sa first slide from age 3 to 12 years old. For this video, I am going to focus more on early childhood. We are going to um, release uh, se separate videos for middle to late childhood. So this video, this episode, para lamang ito sa mga early childhood from ages 3 to 5 years old. The first thing na napaka-noticeable sa mga bata in this age range is sila'y makukulit or malilikot. They are very physically active. But there is a reason why they are physically active because for the first time in their life, they already gain a mastery of their body. Remember, during infancy, uh, yung movement nila is very ruled by reflexes involuntary movements. But as the brain matures bigger, as they gain more experiences, especially physical experiences, nagmamature din yung katawan ng mga bata that for the first time in their life, lahat ng movement nila can now be voluntary. Marami na silang mga physical skills na natututunan as they grow older. Like for example, for the first time, they can walk straight, 
they can now run, they can now jump, and other physical abilities that for the first time, nagagawa na nila mag-isa. And so, these newly found physical abilities, ginagawa silang excited. They become so excited about these newly found abilities that they want to keep on doing it. Kaya yung mga bata, takbuhan ng takbuhan yan, kalikot ng kalikot yan, sigaw ng sigaw yan, di ba? tumbling ng tumbling yan, because they are excited about their newly found physical skills. Kaya naman ang isang implication dito, kapag nakakita tayo ng bata na malikot, eh dapat tinatrato natin yan as something that is normal. Meron kasi ako mga kakilalang adults, pag ang bata malikot, nagagalit. Actually, mas normal sa bata ang maging malikot compared sa hindi maging malikot. Don't get me wrong, meron din namang limitation yung yung kalikutan ng bata. No? Merong kalikutan yung bata na sobrang likot na that it can be considered as not okay anymore. Baka meron ng ibang diagnosis yan. But in general, it is normal for kids to be physically active. Kinakailangan lang natin silang ingatan or pagsabihan about physical activities that they should not do. Pero yung ang bata naglilikot, tumatakbo-takbo ng safe naman, nababantayan naman ng maayos ng adults, that is completely okay. In fact, even if you ask Eric Erickson, the great developmental psychologist, sabi niya sa kanyang teorya, kids in the early childhood stage they are undergoing the stage where there is a conflict between their autonomy and shame and doubt. Ibig sabihin lang yan, to make the long story short, during this time, if children are in this stage, they are in the process of establishing their independence. They want to prove to themselves. They want to prove to other people na kaya nilang gawin yung mga physical abilities on their own. Ayaw nilang lagi silang inaalalayan ng mga adults. They want to prove to themselves na kaya nilang gawin yung mga bagay na gusto nilang gawin on their own. In fact, if they are not successful in doing this, during this stage, sabi ni Eric Erickson, mapupunta sila doon sa kabila, magiging shame, magiging shame and doubt. Mahihiya sila sa sarili nila, they are going to begin to doubt themselves whether they can do things on their own. That's why it's very important, according to Eric Erickson, to help children na talagang may establish sa kanila yung sense of autonomy, that they can do things on their own. During this time, ang mga bata, marami silang mga tanong, and this is the effect of a bigger brain. Remember, in the previous video, sinabi ko na during infancy, papuntang early childhood, mabilis mag-increase yung size ng brain, and that can be explained by the increasing number of brain cells that are growing within the child's brain. So, as a result, kapag dumadami kasi yung brain connection sa utak natin, isa sa epekto niya, naku-curious tayo. So, whenever a child asks many questions, ibig sabihin nun, it is an indication that the brain is developing well. Kaya nga ang implication dito is, dapat, sinusuportahan natin yung brain development ng bata. When a child asks you a certain question because he or she is curious, remember that this is the indication of a growing brain. So, ano ang dapat na maging response natin kapag ang bata nagtatanong, let's take their questions seriously. Kapag meron silang bagay na tinanong, sagutin natin ng tama in a level that they would understand. Unfortunately, meron kasing mga adults no na uh, hindi nila masyadong sineseryoso yung mga tanong ng bata. Yung, yung iba naiinis kapag tinatanong sila ng bata. Yung ibang adults naman, lolokohin yung mga bata kung ano ang tamang sagot, i-distort nila, gagawin nilang joke. no That should not be the case. Whenever a child asks you a sincere question, that child deserves a sincere and truthful answer. Yun lang kinakailangan i-phrase mo, translate mo yung sagot mo sa level na maiintindihan ng bata. Children are thirsty for knowledge during this time, and as a responsible adult, you should be the one to help them nourish this thirst for knowledge. Diba sabi nga ng Proverbs, Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. It is during early childhood na pinakamaganda talaga i-training yung bata. Pinakamaganda na magpasok ng knowledge sa utak ng mga bata because during this time, the brain is very hungry for knowledge. Everything that they learn during the childhood stage becomes their foundation for their future life. Babalik-balikan nila yung mga natutunan nila during this stage of their life when later on, they become adults. Kaya napakahalaga talaga that everything that we teach children during this time 
must be taken seriously. Dapat maganda yung quality ng mga bagay na tinuturo natin during this period of their life. During early childhood din, <coughs> nagkakaroon ni sila ng tinatawag nating object permanence. Remember, during infancy, wala pang object permanence. Out of sight, out of mind. You show a baby a toy, the baby plays with the toy, and then you hide the toy. Guess what? The baby forgets that there is a toy in the first place. But as that baby grows older, going towards late infancy, going towards early childhood, nagkakaroon na ng object permanence. This is an indication na nag improve na yung memory ng bata. So how do you test if the child already has object permanence? Hindi gawin mo ulit yung test na sinabi ko kanina. Show a child a toy, and then the child plays with the toy, and then you get the toy, and then you hide the, do the toy somewhere, most kids in early childhood, if they already have object permanence, hahanapin nila yung toy. The fact na hinahanap na nila yung toy, it means that they are able to mentally represent that toy in their heads, even if they cannot see the toy. So, hindi ni sila out of sight, out of mind. Gumaganda na, lumalakas na yung memory nila. You know, the memory centers of the brain are now capable of absorbing certain memories, including memories for objects. Kaya yung mga bata during this time, magaling maghanap yan. No, marami na silang mga bagay na hindi nila nakikita. But they understand that these things that they don't see still exist. And so, what do they do? They explore the environment to look for these things. During this time, ang mga bata nagiging highly imaginative na rin. Malakas ang imagination ng mga bata. And they express this in many ways. They can do pretend plays, so, they, be, they pretend to be someone else. They pretend to be Superman. Nagkakaroon sila ng mga imaginary friends. At nagpa-practice din sila ng tinatawag nating animism. Animism is when a child thinks or considers an object to be also a human being. Kinakausap din niya yung favorite toy niya. Nag-aaway din sila ng favorite toy niya. Sa panahon ng bata, ang mga bagay, ang mga objects around him or her, meron ding mga feelings katulad ng mga tao. Again, this, Im this type of imaginations, expressions of imagination, very strong during early childhood. And this is also an indication of, again, a growing brain. So it is not only the memory that strengthens during this time, but also a child's creativity and imaginativeness. Kaya ang isang implication dito, kinakailangan ang mga bata talaga, we need to support their creativity. We need to support their ability to imagine things because it's good for their brain development. And how do we do that? By giving them toys. Alam nyo, wag natin minamaliit yung kahalagahan na ang isang bata naglalaro ng mga toys. No? Most adults think, Nagastos lang yan. Sayang lang yung pera pag bibili ka ng mahal na toy, no? Well, I agree. May mga toy naman talaga na mahal given the specific function of the toy. Pero, merong mga laruan na mahal nga. Pero, yung impact sa brain development ng bata, maganda. So, we need to be choosy about the toys that we give to these kids. Let's choose toys that will support their intellectual development. Yung nakakatalino. Okay? Dapat yung mga toys na ibibigay natin sa kanila, number one, dapat safe. And number two, dapat nakakatulong sa kanilang intellectual development. These toys enable them to think and to practice their creativity. So, toys are very important in a child's life. During this time, for the first time in their life, they can now establish relationships with someone outside their family. During infancy kasi, yung mga kakilala ng babies, eh, yung mga kapamilya lang niya. Yung nanay niya, yung tatay niya, yung kapatid niya, that's it. Pero kapag pasok ng early childhood, nalalabas mo na sa bahay yung bata, no? makakakilala yan ng iba't ibang mga uh, bata rin, naka-age niya. And eventually, these kids can become friends. So for the first time in their life, they can now establish relationships with someone who is not their family member. But if there is one pattern in the social exchanges of children during this time that are very noticeable, Tandaan natin that during this time, kids are very gender exclusive. Most kids, they play with their own sex. Boys with boys and girls with girls. So, punta ka sa preschool, punta ka sa mga kindergarten classrooms, karamihan talaga ng mga peer groups during this time, they are very comfortable playing with their own sex. And the thing is, 
when they play with their own sex, maganda naman sa development nila yan kasi marami mga nangyayari on the sides as they interact with uh, their friends in the same sex. Like for example, nagkakaroon tayo ng gender typing. Gender typing is a process where kids begin to learn how to be a boy or how to be a girl. Kung baga na educate sila sa mga ways, sa kultura, kung papaano maging isang lalaki, kung papaano maging isang babae. Ano ba dapat nilalaro ng isang lalaki? Ano ba ang dapat nilalaro ng isang babae? Papaano ba dapat magsalita ang isang lalaki? Paano magsalita ang isang babae? Paano gumalaw ang isang lalaki? Paano gumalaw ang isang babae? All of these things, they learn during their interactions with their peers of the same sex. But later on, this pattern of interaction will change as they become more mature. As they enter middle childhood, late childhood, especially during adolescence, medyo magko-cross sex interaction na yan. No, yung mga lalaki, meron na nila silang mga kaibigang mga babae. But during early childhood stage, most of the time, kids are more likely to stay within their own sexes. Another uh, positive thing that happens when children interact with each other is it enhances their emotional development. Remember, doon sa, na, sa past video natin during infancy, we discussed that babies feel emotions. But the emotions that they feel are primary emotions. Yung mga basic lang. Joy, anger, fear, love, and sadness. But the more social interactions these kids experience, mas nagiging sophisticated na yung mga emotions that they are now capable of feeling. For the first time in their life, they can now feel pride. They can now feel jealousy, what it means to be lonely, what it means to be happy. Dumadami na yung range of possible emotions that they can feel which tells you nagiging maganda na yung development ng kanilang emotions during this stage. Again, paano na enhance yung emotional development ng bata during this time? The more they interact with people in the world. The more they interact with people outside their family members, lalong lalo na yung mga ka-age groups nila. During early childhood stage, another noticeable feature in their psychology is mahina pa yung kanilang reasoning skills. Mahina pa yung logic ng mga bata. Eh, unfortunately, karamihan ng mga adults, ginagawang ano to, no? they are taking advantage of this para makuha yung mga gusto nila sa mga bata. Like for example, money or to convince kids not to misbehave. Diba? Most adults are making use of this uh, limitation that children have when it comes to their reasoning skills. Let me give you an example of how kids show their limitations in their reasoning skills. Imagine there's a kid, ito yung nasa slide, pinakitaan mo ng dalawang baso na may lamang fluid. And the thing is, yung mga tubig na yan, sa dalawang baso na yan, pantay. Pareho lang sila ng dami. And then the adult gets a longer container and then transfers the content of the, of the shorter container to the longer one. So, transfer mo yung tubig doon. So, it appeared na mukhang mas matangkad yung pangalawang container compared to the first container. Kapag tatanungin mo yung bata, alin dito ang mas maraming tubig? Most kids during the early childhood stage would answer that the taller container containing the water has more water compared to the shorter container. Tayong mga adults, gets natin yan. Well, sana na gets mo, no? Gets natin yan na ang tamang sagot pareho lang. But during early childhood stage, they cannot understand that principle. Ito yung tinatawag ni John P.J. na conservation task. Most children, during this stage, they fail. Bumabagsak sila sa conservation task. Another example, pakitaan mo yung bata ng limang barya. Dalawang rows ng limang barya. Tapos yung isang row, gawin mong mahaba. Yung isang row, gawin mong maigse. And then you ask the child, alin dito sa dalawang row ang mas marami? Most kids in the early childhood stage would say that there are more coins in the second row compared to the first row. Bakit? Because in their perspective, mas mahaba kasi, you know, mas mahaba yung, yung second row compared to the first row. Which will make them think na mas maraming coin yung second row compared to the first row. But we all know na ang tamang sagot, pantay lang yan. Kasi tiglimang coins lang naman yan, eh, di ba? Oo. So, during this time, ganun mag-isip yung mga bata. So, the question now is, how do you help them enhance their reasoning skills? Siyempre, hindi naman pwede or ayaw naman natin na lumaki yung bata na ganun yung level ng reasoning skills niya. No? We want 
them to improve in the way they reason things out? Is there a way to help them how to enhance their reasoning skills? Ang sagot meron. The more you expose them to the real world, the better their reasoning skills become. Keyword dito, exposure. Ang mga bata, para tumalino sa tunay na buhay, kinakailangan expose sila sa tunay na buhay. Okay? And there are many ways how to expose them to the real world. Una, you can make them experience talking, let them experience talking to different people. Dapat yung kausap ng bata, hindi lang puro magulang niya, hindi lang puro kapatid niya. You know, dapat nakakausap siya ng isang isang bata sa labas ng bahay, nakakausap siya ng isang stranger, nakakausap siya ng uncle niya, ng ninang niya, iba't ibang tao. Okay, the more the child talks to different people, mas na-enhance yung kanyang reasoning skills. Another way on how to expose the child into the real world, iparanas mo sa kanya yung iba't ibang mga social activities. Another advantage of this, kapag pinaparanas mo sa kanya yung social activities, marami siyang mga natututunan na lesson in the process. Like for example, you let the child experience being in the market. Isama mo yung bata, iparanas mo sa kanya na mag-commute sa public transportation o pabilihin mo sa sari-sari store or bigyan mo siya ng responsibility responsibility inside the home for example siya yung tagawalis ng bahay di ba when you do this when you give these social activities to a child marami silang mga natututunan na magagamit nila later on in the real world like for example you know for the first time in their life a child would understand what trade means trade Diba? ano ibig sabihin ng trade? May ibibigay ka sa isang tao, may kapalit yon na babalik. Okay? Pag pinabili mo siya sa sari-sari store, for example, merong trade na nangyayari. And the child understands the concept of money. Yung bawat papel pala, yung bawat barya pala na binibigay sa tindahan, may iba't ibang mga values pala yon. Dapat, para mabili mo yung gusto mong bilin, yung value ng pera na hawak mo is equal to the value of the object that you want to buy. Kapag masyadong malaki yung value ng pera mo compared to the object that you want to buy, magkakaroon ng sukli. Kapag yung pera mo kulang, hindi ka pwedeng bumili ng bagay na gusto mong bilhin. Ang mga tao pala, pwedeng gumamit ng pera, ang kapalit nun, sasakay sila sa isang kotse na hindi sa kanila. Anong tawag doon? Commuting. You see? So, kids begin to understand all these things when you expose them to the real world like this. The more you expose them to the real world, mas tumatalino sila. Mas gumaganda yung kanilang reasoning skills. Kaya alam nyo, isa sa mga bagay na ayokong nangyayari ngayon is there are a lot of kids. Slowly but surely, they are becoming slaves to the gadgets. Maghapon na sa bahay nagga-gadget. Maghapon sa bahay eh, naglalaro ng mga online games. Uh, well, personally, I have nothing against the online games, no? But what I am against is when these online games seems like nakokontrol na nila 100% yung attention ng mga bata. Yung attention ng mga bata during this time, hindi dapat 100% nasa virtual world eh. Dapat ilalagay natin yan sa real world. Because that is the only way that a child can become a little bit smarter in terms of practical life when they see things happening in the real world. Kaya isang application dito sa mga parents na nakikinig, no? dapat yung mga bata hindi nyo hinahayaan na yung kanilang attention maghapon nandoon sa gadget. As much as possible, please help them pay attention to things that are really happening in the real world. During early childhood stage, meron din silang underdeveloped theory of mind. Ang ibig sabihin ng theory of mind, this is a very technical term in psychology, pero ang ibig sabihin lang yan is, they have the ability to understand that what they think is not necessarily what other people are thinking. Sa Tagalog, yung theory of mind, Naniniwala sila or meron silang kakayanan na ma-realize na yung iniisip ko, hindi iniisip ng iba. Okay? So, during early childhood stage, most kids, wala pa silang theory of mind. Feeling nila, yung iniisip nila, yun din yung iniisip ng iba. Yung perspective nila, yun din yung perspective ng ibang tao. Yan yung tinatawag nating egocentrism or yung innocent selfishness. Take note, innocent ha. Ibig sabihin, hindi nila sinasadya na 
maging ganitong selfish. Iba kasi yung sinasadya mong selfish ka, no? yung alam mong selfish ka. Pero during this time, they don't know that they are being selfish. It's just that they still don't know the idea that different people have different thoughts. Yun yung tinatawag nating theory of mind. Hindi pa gumagana yung theory of mind during early childhood stage. In fact, there is a test eh. Merong test kang pwedeng gamitin para malaman mo kung yung bata ba, meron na ba siyang theory of mind. Okay? Ito yung test. Halimbawa, this is Sally and this is Anne. Merong dalawang babae dyan. Sally has a ball and she puts it into her basket. So, nakita ni Ann, no na si Sally, may bola, nilagay ni Sally yung bola doon sa basket. Sally goes out for a walk. Ann takes the ball out of the basket. So, nung umalis si Sally, si Ann, pumunta doon sa basket, kinuha yung bola na nilagay ni Sally. And what does she do? Ann puts the ball into the box. Nilipat niya from the basket to the box. And then what happens? Now, Sally comes back and she wants to play with the ball. Tatanungin mo ngayon yung bata, saan hahanapin na Sally yung bola? Most kids in the early childhood stage would fail this task. Ano ang isasagot nila? Ang isasagot nila, hahanapin ni Sally yung bola doon sa kahon, sa box. Bakit? Kasi yun yung nakita nung bata kung nasaan yung bola. Okay? A child in this stage would think, that since I saw that the ball is inside the box, everybody in the world knows that that ball is inside the box. Hindi pa niya gets na yung nakita kong bola na nilagay sa box, hindi yun yung alam ni Sally. Wala pa silang ganung distinction. Again, egocentric sila. What they think, they assume that's what everybody thinks. But shortly, before they leave early childhood, as they approach middle childhood, unti-unti papasa na yung mga bata in the theory of mind. Test. Okay? Ang isasagot na nila dito, ano? Saan nahanapin ni Sally yung bola? Doon sa basket. Okay? Kasi kapag ang bata sinagot niya, hahanapin ni Sally yung bola doon sa basket, what does that mean? The child already understands that what he or she saw or what he or she knows is not necessarily what Sally knows. Na-differentiate na niya yung thought ng sarili niya sa thought ng ibang tao. Yan yung tinatawag nating theory of mind. Another indicator during childhood stage, specifically early childhood stage, na meron ng theory of mind yung bata is when they are now capable of lying. Kapag nahuli mo na silang nagsisunungaling, actually, ano yan, no? mixed emotions yan. Malulungkot ka bakit kanila niloloko, pero in, in a way, matutuwa ka rin kasi ibig sabihin yan, if children are now capable of lying, meron na silang theory of mind. Nagde-develop yung brain nila kaya nagkaroon na sila ng theory of mind, di ba? Kasi kapag nagsinungaling yung bata, meron siyang sinabing hindi totoo. What does that mean? The child understands that what he or she knows is not necessarily what my dad or my mom knows. Nagigets nila na pwede pala yun. Iba yung laman ng utak niya sa laman ng utak ng parents niya. When that happens, when the child realizes that, we can say the child already has a theory of mind. Now, theory of mind is a very important intellectual uh, development to happen kasi maraming magiging pwedeng gawin ang isang bata na meron ng theory of mind. Like for example, pwede na siyang mag-maintain ng isang serious relationship such as a friendship, kapag meron ng theory of mind. Nagigets na niya na yung mga ginagawa niya, posibleng may epekto sa iba. Magigets na niya na merong mga bagay, may mga behaviors na baka okay sa yung gawin, pero hindi okay sa iba. You know, that ability, that thinking ability is very important for the establishment of friendships. Kaya mahalaga na sa isang bata ay eh, ma-develop talaga yung theory of mind. Question, how do we develop a child's theory of mind? Paano natin sila metatrain na ma-realize na iba yung iniisip nila kumpara sa iniisip ng ibang tao? According to studies, the following can help. Number one, exposure to people. Again, sinabi ko nga kanina yon. the more you expose the child to different people, Isang magandang epekto na nangyayari, ini-enhance mo rin yung kanyang theory of mind. Number two, it has something to do with language development. The more words, the more vocabulary they know, the more 
it contributes to their ability to realize the theory of mind. And last one, number three, according to studies, kapag yung bata pala, binabasahan ng parents nila ng stories, and then they talk about those stories, especially during bedtime, bago matulog yung bata, magandang practice pala na binabasahan sila ng, ng story, no? Kasi ang epekto daw nun, na enhance yung theory of mind ng bata. Especially when when you you are doing active reading. Ibig sabihin kasi ng active reading, habang binabasa mo yung story sa bata, nagtatanong-tanong ka doon sa bata about the story. You know? So, halimbawa, tatanungin mo, ano sa tingin mo yung mararamdaman ni Peter Pan? Ano sa tingin mo yung iniisip ng Big Bad Wolf? So, hindi ka lang basa ng basa. You know? So, you are going to pause once in a while in the story to ask the child certain questions. And those questions will force the child to really think of the answers that will enhance their ability to establish theory of mind. So, marami ng beses na pinag-aralan niya no, na ang bedtime stories para sa mga bata, maganda yan for their language development and for their theory of mind development. And one more thing na mahalagang malaman dito, alam nyo ba, yung tinatawag nating reminiscing is also a good activity to enhance the intellectual development of the child. Ibig sabihin ng reminiscing, uh, kakausapin mo yung bata and then you are going to talk about a, a positive experience that they had in the past. So, tatanong-tanungin mo yung bata, naalala mo ba nung Christmas last year, anong ginawa mo? Oo, naalala mo anong kinain mo doon? Naalala mo kung sino mga kalaro mo doon? Ano yung toys na pinaglaruan nyo? The more you reminisce positive experiences like this, according to studies, the more you are enhancing the child's theory of mind. During this time, ang mga bata, they have the inability to distinguish fantasy from reality. Isa na naman itong limitation ng intellect ng bata. No? Hindi pa nila ma mapag-iba kung ano yung totoo sa hindi totoo. Para sa kanila, lahat totoo. Especially kapag nakikita nila in the real world. You know? Kaya ang implication dito, dalawa, una, yung mga adults. Knowing this this uh, feature of a child's mind, kinakailangan maging maingat yung mga adults in what they do, in what they say to the child. Because again, kids are constantly watching the adults. Diba? Laging nanonood yung mga bata sa ginagawa ng mga adults and they have the tendency to imitate what the adults are doing. Because remember, in the child's mind, in the child's eyes, idol nila ang mga adults. So, whatever adults do, whatever adults say, kids would think that these are the right things to do, that these are the right things to say. Kaya yung mga adults na palamura, yung mga adults na naninigarilyo, tapos nakikita ng mga bata, eh makakaasa ka. It's just a matter of time before the child learns how to smoke and before the child imitates all the other bad things that adults are doing. Isa pang implication dito tungkol naman sa media. Because the child cannot yet differentiate what's fantasy from what's reality, dapat maging maingat din tayo sa kung ano ang pinapanood natin sa mga bata. Kasi ang mga bata, tuwing meron silang makikita na show, especially cartoon shows, they think that what's happening in that show also happens in real life. At marami ng mga cases na nangyari where this was expressed. Yung makalimbawa, merong isang case in the United States, may isang bata na nanonood siya ng Superman. Nakita, nakita niya si Superman, si Superman kung ba yun sa building, tapos lumipad, nagkataon that this child is using a living in the building, and then habang then, ano siya, siya, yung siya, yung nani, nani, nani siya, siya, hindi siya, hindi siya, hindi siya lang aalagaan ng pusing na may ginagawa-gawa, and then, and then, may pinapanood na malaman sa ilitana, ang ginawa niya, ang ginawa Nung nakita niya yung ginawa ni Superman, akala niya talaga yung nangyayari sa ngayari na buhay yun, what happened? That child opened the window, and then jumped off the building. You see? you see, children, children are like are this. Like they still they cannot, cannot differentiate, differentiate, distinguish what's fantasy from reality. At sana maging ano na rin to, ano, maging warning na rin ito para sa mga nanonood kung anong klaseng mga cartoons ang pinapanood ng mga bata. Because to tell you the truth, merong mga cartoons dyan na mukhang pambata. Sinasabi nila na pambata. But if you analyze what's happening in that cartoon show, punong-puno ng violence punong puno ng mga scenes na hindi dapat makita ng bata. ba? Like for example, ito nakikita nyo sa slide na yan. ba? I mean, can you imagine pinapalabas ito sa mga bata? So, natututo sila ng pagtutok ng barel, natututo sila ng konsepto ng barel, at akala nila ang barel ganyan-ganyan lang. 
basta-basta mo na lang itututok kung trip mo, di ba? Let's again um, be careful about what we show children during this time because they still don't know what's real from what's not real. And another very important activity during early childhood years is when they experience playing games, lalong-lalo na with their fellow kids. Because when they play games with their fellow kids, ang isang bagay na magandang nangyayari is they become better in their social skills. na -e enhance yung social skills. And a lot of these social skills that kids learn in the process of playing with other kids, magagamit nila yung mga social skills na yan, again, as they continue their life on earth. As they enter middle childhood, late childhood, adolescence, adulthood, lagi nilang gagamitin yung mga social skills that they learn whenever they play games with other kids. Such as what? Ano ba tong mga social skills na ito that you learn from playing with other kids? Cooperation, emotional sensitivity, imagination, creativity, problem-solving skills, how do you resolve conflicts. Natututunan ng mga bata ito habang nakikipaglaro sila sa kanilang mga kapwa-bata. And this is bad news, especially for the generation today, no? Kasi yung mga bata ngayon, eh, sabi ko nga kanina, nakakulong na sa gadgets. ba? Diba? So, you can imagine that there are a lot of kids today, kulang na kulang sila sa interaction with their fellow kids in real life. Most kids today, majority of their time is spent playing with these gadgets. Eh, ang kalaro nila sa mga gadgets na yan, hindi tao. Virtual things. Ibang-iba yung ma-experience mo na makalaro ka talaga with fellow kids, with your fellow human beings, compared to you just play games with a computer. So you can only imagine, if a child becomes addicted to these gadgets, and he or she has no mood to play with other kids, marami siyang mga, uh, na, ano, no? marami siyang mga nadideprive ng mga social skills. Kaya ako naniniwala, marami mga bata na panay ang paggagadget, maihina sa mga social skills na ito eh. Kulang sa cooperative skills, walang emotional sensitivity, hindi ganun ka-creative, hindi marunong mag-solve ng problema, hindi marunong umayos ng gulo because they were not able to experience to develop these social skills in real life. Kaya ang lesson dito, dapat talaga, kung ikaw ay isang magulang or if you are dealing with the child, you need to let the child play. Play must be a very big part of a child's life. No? Dapat huwag tayo nagagalit na ang mga bata puro laro na lang. No? Kasi talagang nature ng mga bata yan. Eh. This is their way of learning things about themselves, about other people, about the world in general. Sabi nga ni George Bernard Shaw, di ba? We don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. That's a very good quotation to think about. So, ang paglalaro, malaking parte dapat yan ng buhay ng isang bata. Kaya nga marami na rin mga studies ngayon ang nagkukumpare ng mga generations across the years. No? When you compare kids who grew up during the 90s and the kids who grew up today, during the gadget stage, marami ng mga nakikitang personality differences between these two generations. And I think, what explains those personality dif differences? Exposure to the real world kulang na kulang ang mga bata ngayon sa exposure sa real world. You know? Kulang na kulang sila sa experiences where they interact with their with other human beings outside the family. Tapos da, nadagdagan pa ng quarantine ngayon, di ba? Nadagdagan pa ng mga restriction that kids can go out the house. So lalong nagiging restricted na tuloy yung yung interaction ng mga bata with each other, which I think magkakaroon ng epekto yan in their personality as they grow older. Remember, kids don't remember their best day of television. What do they remember? They remember the best days where they interacted with other kids. Yan yung isa sa mga pinaka-source ng positive memories ng mga bata. Yung memories nila of their interactions with other kids. So before we end this short video, ano ba yung mga takeaways natin about early childhood? What are the lessons that we can learn for today? Number one, tandaan natin that it is during early childhood na marami mga foundation ang naseset. Diba? Early childhood is the foundation for many psychological skills as you can see here on the graph. Diba? 
maraming mga psychological skills dito. Ito yung tinatawag nating sensitive period. Sensitive period means this is the period where the brain is expecting stimulation. And it is during this time that the brain is expecting lots and lots of stimulation. Diba? Kinakailangan ang mga bata during the early childhood stage ma-expose sa numbers, ma-expose sa mga kaibigan, ma-expose sa mga visual, sa mga auditory stimulus. Kaya, again, kinakailangan talaga na ang isang bata during early childhood stage, binibigyan natin sila ng maraming mga stimulation. Binibigyan natin sila ng maraming stimulation across the different senses. Diba? Visual, auditory, gustatory, so on and so forth. At madadaan natin yan sa environment. Okay? So, kapag may alaga kang bata early, na nasa early childhood stage, one way for you to support that child's brain development is to make sure that the environment where the child is in is very stimulating. Yung nakaka-curious, yung marami siyang pwedeng matutunan, yung meron siyang mga skills na pwede niyang ma-enhance. That's a very important need that children should receive during early childhood. Number two, adult presence is very important in childhood. No? Uh, ang isang bata na lumalaki, importante talaga na laging merong adult na umaalalay sa kanya. Remember, children look up to adults. If we want our kids to advance in terms of their cognitive skills, in terms of the things that they could do, actually, mangyayari naman yan, eh, lalong-lalo na kapag Merong adult na nagtuturo sa kanila. Children look up to adults. Whatever adults do, whatever adults say, however adults behave or react in certain situations, ginagaya ng mga bata yan. Kasi nga, tulad nga na sinabi ko kanina, idol ng mga bata ang mga adults. So, kinakailangan yung adults na nag-aalaga sa bata, alam niya kung ano ba yung mga magagandang bagay na dapat niyang tinuturo, yung mga, mga magagandang bagay na dapat niyang pinapakita sa bata para magiging maganda yung development ng bata. ba? Diba? Sabi nga ng isang quotation, sa mata ng isang bata, ang isang pagkakamali ay nagiging tama kung ito ay ginagawa ng mas matanda. So please, adults beware. You should very be cautious about the behaviors, about the patterns that you are showing to children because they are watching you every single day. And also, adults enhance children's cognitive development. Isa pa yan sa mga role ng mga adults other than bigyan yung mga bata ng stimulating environment, yung mga adults malaki din ang role sa pagpapatalino ng mga bata. Sabi nga ng Bible, di ba? Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Ibig sabihin, punong-puno pa ng foolishness yung bata. Marami pa siyang bagay na hindi alam. Marami siyang, pa siyang bagay na dapat na makorek. But the road of correction, yan na, shall drive it far from him. Ano ang antidote? Ano ang gamot para mawala yung foolishness na meron yung mga bata? Correction. And that correction, I believe, is expected to come from adults who care for the child. Okay? Number three, children need balance of love and discipline. I want to emphasize on the word need. Ito ay isang pangangailangan. Hindi ito optional. Hindi, hindi yung love at saka yung discipline, hindi ito binibigay kung kailan mo lang gusto o kung trip lang nung parent. It is a need, just like food, just like air. Kids need to receive these things every day. Combination of love and discipline. Unfortunately, marami akong parents na nakikita, eh, mukhang love lang ang binibigay. Walang discipline. Actually, between the two, mas madaling ibigay yung love as a need. Eh. ba? Diba? I mean, we believe that everyone needs love, including children. Totoo naman yun. Pero tatandaan din natin na totoo rin na ang disiplina is also a need. A lot of parents don't realize that, that kids need discipline. Kailangan ng bata yung madisiplina. Hindi ito isang bagay na parang napipilitan ka lang ibigay o nagigilty ka kapag binibigay mo. Huwag kang magilty pag nagdidisiplina ka because the child's mind needs discipline. Diba? Kailangan combination of love and discipline. In parenting, ang tawag dyan, authoritative parenting. And do you know that authoritative parenting, merong special mention in the Bible yan. Diba sabi, He who spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is careful to discipline him. In this passage, makikita mo yung balance ng love and discipline. Diba? He who spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him. Ibig sabihin, okay lang na magbigay ka ng love sa bata, pero 
puro love lang ba? Merong word na disiplina dito. Careful to discipline him. Love mo yung bata, pero didisiplinahin mo. Paano mo didisiplinahin? Careful. Yung pagdidisiplina mo, hindi dapat nakakasira ng self-confidence ng bata. Hindi dapat nakakasira ng self-esteem ng bata. Namemaintain pa rin yung healthy mindset ng bata kahit dinidisiplina mo siya. That's the kind of discipline that any child would need. Again, balancing love and discipline, kailangan yan ng mga bata during this period. Okay, so in closing, childhood should be a constant source of positive memories. Diba? I mean, the best memories that we have about our life. Of course, meron na tayo niyan during adulthood, during adolescence, pero yung mga pinaka-basic, yung mga pinaka-unang magagandang memories natin, we always go back to our childhood to activate those memories. Sabi nga ni Dan Simmons, when we are old and failing, it is the memories of childhood which can be summoned most clearly. Kaya naman dapat, during early childhood stage, yung mga adults sinisigurado nila na karamihan ng mga experiences ng mga bata during that time are very positive and at the same time, very stimulating. The childhood needs must be met. That's the best way that we can ensure that a child would have a good childhood. Kapag naibigay natin sa batang yon lahat ng mga bagay na pangangailangan niya. Physically, more importantly, psychologically. The more we give to these kids, yung mga pangangailangan nila bilang bata in the psychological level, the better the, their childhood becomes. So, thank you for listening. Ang next topic natin would be the next stages which is middle to late childhood.